So welcome to another Puzzle Mystery Quilt video. This is for Petting Zoo, Clue 5, size small. Um, this is the Carnival Puzzle Mystery Quilt Fall 2023 for Cotton Cuts. And um, I paid for this myself. I'm not an ambassador, but I'm just excited to be doing these this year and um, doing the tutorial. So I'm hoping that you are excited. Um, Tree of Life opened on December 1st. It's now December 5th. So if you are excited for Tree of Life, let me know um, what colorways did you pick, colorway or colorways. Um, I picked two. Which ones do you think I picked? I don't think either one that I picked sold out the first day. Uh, maybe one of them did, but I think at least one of them is sold out now, and there's probably a wait list. But anyways, I'm excited to find out which ones you think I did. Um, I did pick a large and a small for uh, spring 2023, and those will come out or start being mailed, I think, February 1st um, or whatever the first Friday is in February. So let's get started. Um, I have our inventory here. I have watched a uh, video of this being put together, um, someone who does it very similarly, or I kind of... Um, liked this format um the way she does hers and i watched her do hers and her video ended up being an hour long this is a lot there are um two 5a and one 5b blocks for this um this month and there's a lot of half square triangles um so i am going to do one of each and um, just follow along when you can um, and we'll get into it. But I want to do the inventory first just so that you have an idea of what you should be expecting in your clue. So the pieces in this pack um, for the small triangles, they are 10 of fabric A, 12 of fabric B, 1 fabric C, 4 fabric D, 11 fabric E, and 2 fabric F. And then for our squares, we have one fabric A, seven fabric D, one fabric E, six fabric F, and then we have two small rectangles in fabric B. And I'm going to go ahead and get set up for section 5A, step one. Okay, for section 5A, step one, remember I'm doing half of what the instructions call for. So for step one, you're gonna make half square triangles. So 1.1, one one, you're going to need two fabric D, two fabric E, and then for 1.2, you're gonna need four fabric E and four fabric B. We are sewing these on the long edge making half square triangles for 1.1 one one, you're going to press down towards d and then we're going to press up towards b so let's get started i hope you had a good holiday if you're in the u.s we just celebrated thanksgiving or harvest day I call it Harvest Day. Um, we did a Friendsgiving with um, my coworker and his wife, and it was wonderful. Um, you'll also notice I'm using a different sewing machine today. I just didn't feel like pulling Betty out from underneath my desk and switching sewing machines around, so hopefully, Switching sewing machines in the middle of a project is not going to be too much of an issue. This one also has an automatic love. Okay, so we said so fabric E and fabric D. Pressing towards B. And 
And then we're going to press towards fabric B for our other two. The sewing machine, they're not sewing machine. The iron is more cumbersome, I think, than my Aliso Mini would be. But the Aliso Mini just gets so hot. I, it's obnoxious how hot that iron gets, and I don't like it. So I will take my bigger iron over my Mini. Okay, so for 1.3, we're going to take our D one of our, you're going to take two of your D and E blocks, D and E half square triangles, and two of your fabric E and B half square triangles, and you're going to sew them together on the long side. We're going to try and line these up. I just sewed together clue five for the large. And that took me about two hours to complete. All right, we're just gonna do step two as well, because why not? Um, e and B and E, you're gonna place fabric F to the, the right. I know why they're separate steps, but we're going to do them together. And you're going to do, make two of those and that's step two. As with everything, as long as your quarter of an inch seam allowance is consistent, you should be totally fine. All right. So for our one dot step one dot three, we're going to press our seam towards um, fabric B. The steam is, is a lot. All right, so you should have two of these and we're gonna set them aside for now. Step two, we sewed um, a square fabric F to the right of fabric B and E half square triangle. We are pressing towards the half square triangle. which is gonna be kind of cumbersome, I think. Make sure that it just stuck on the back. There we go. So that's step two. And we're gonna go ahead and set this one aside as well. All right, for step three, 3.1, three we're go you're gonna make two. So grab two A triangles and two B triangles. We're gonna sew them on the long edge. I'm always afraid to talk while my sewing machine is running, at least this one, because I feel like it's louder than my singer. And I always use a leader fabric just in case. This one has a single hole. It's not a, this machine doesn't do zigzag. But I saw in the Facebook group where some people were having some issues with their sewing machine eating their, or chewing up the corners of their triangles. All right, we're pressing towards fabric A on this one. All right. And then we're gonna grab another two fabric F squares and you're gonna place that to the left of your half square triangles. And we're gonna sew those together. I feel like my singer in general does a better job with half square triangles than the GP did. For some, I don't know why. And it's probably me. The pressure on. All right, so again, we're pressing this one towards the half square triangle.
making sure that it's all laying in the correct direction. Okay, so step four, we're gonna take what we just made, F, B, and A. Then we're gonna take our step two unit, um, B, E, and a fabric F square, and we're gonna place that underneath and then it'll be um, our unit we made in step two, or no, step one, sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together. All of your seams should nest. So what I really like about cotton cuts is that not only is it all pre-cut for you, uh, which is the only way I would do a block of the month at this point, um, I'm not afraid to admit I'm lazy. Um, but that the directions are just easy to follow for me. All right, so with this one, we're gonna press our seam down. Uh, towards fabric E. Um, I just love how simple it is. The blocks come together very nicely. Um, I've done a block of the month where they weren't pre-cut, I'm never again. Okay, so we're going to take our unit we just made and we're going to place that um, step one block on the bottom. Orient it the way it is in the instructions. On the bottom, again, these seams should nest. But I did a block of the month in 2012 that I had to cut out all these little itty bitty pieces. Um, I had to use the Marty Michelle templates and they gave us just enough fabric and it, I, I hated it. I hated every minute of it. It took me over 10 years to get all of the blocks done and it was supposed to be a block of the month. How wild is that? My press, my foot control on this machine does have a an ability for me to use my foot pedal to cut my, my threads. I don't use that anymore. Um, I have cut my threads so many times while I have been quilting a quilt, but we're not going to do that. Okay, so we're going to press down towards this uh, set of half square triangles we just sewed on. So basically, all of your seams should be um pressed down i know it looks like i'm pressing up but i've got the block upside down it's just easier for me this way all right so there we go that's step four you should have two of those All right, for step five, you're going to grab two fabric A and two fabric D triangles, and we're going to sew them together on the long side. I mentioned this in my fortune teller video, but it is pouring outside. It's been raining here for days. I had to take Luna to the vet today and I was like, it was awful. All right, so we're pressing these popsicle triangles towards fabric A. All right, and then you're gonna grab two fabric D squares. I love this. Look at the little hedgehog. He's so cute. 
It's like the best fussy cut that happened on accident. So <laughs> I'm weird. It's fine. Actually, it looks like this almost came from the same, but it's not. You can see it almost lines up. Anyway, you're going to place your square fabric D next to, um, it's going to be on the left of your half square triangle. Make sure that your fabric D's are um, matching. The, the points of your fabric D triangle should be oriented bottom left. You're going to make two of these. And that will be step five. Um, but anyways, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, rain. It's been raining here. I mean, it's Washington state. So when is it, it raining? I mean, we don't get a ton of rain in the summer. So they actually have really beautiful summers. Um, they get very dry. Okay. So we are going to press the theme towards our half square triangle. So towards the right, I'm going to just flip this around so it's easier for me. Okay, you should have two of these and that's step five. Oh, I'm just going to set that up there. All right, so you're going to grab two more a triangles and two B triangles. Sew them on the long side. We're making another half square triangle. What is your drink of choice while you're sewing? Um, normally mine is water. This morning I've been drinking coffee. It felt like a coffee day and I was trying to save some money. This seam we're pressing towards fabric B. Um, trying to save a little bit of money instead of going to Dutch Brothers like I normally do. Um, I'm going to Dutch Brothers tomorrow because it's sticker day. So, um, all right. So that's your half square triangle for step six. You should have two of them. Now grab two fabric D squares. Again, look at that hedgehog. He's so effing cute. Um, and that's going to go to the right of this half square triangle set. So you're going to make two. Um, so I made coffee at home this morning and I had like a cup and a half because it got, it got cold. <laughs> I had breakfast and then I started recording my fortune teller. Now that I'm all caught up, I try to do them in the same day. And the only reason I'm doing them on a Tuesday is because I'm off of work because we just had drill weekend and yeah. Okay. So this one we are pressing again towards our half square triangles. So this time to the left. All right. And set that aside. Okay. So step seven, we're taking, you're going to grab two fabric B triangles and two fabric A triangles. Again, half square triangles sewing on the long side. Um, but I made myself coffee this morning and it's a nice little treat. All right, this one we are pressing towards fabric A. Come on. I looked over at my recording software and thought, what if I had forgotten to unmute the camera? <laughs> that would have been so awkward. All right. So you made two of these, grab two fabric F squares, and you're going to place the squares to the left of your half square triangles. Again, fabric B is going to be oriented in the 
the bottom left position. Then we're gonna sew fabric F to the left. Like, pro streamer, awkward. Oh my gosh, I would have had to like record, do a voiceover for this whole video. That would have been terrible. I don't really know how anybody feels about clue one because I had to do a voiceover. I don't want to do that again. I didn't like it. <laughs> okay. So for your two half square triangles and square units, you're going to be pressing again towards the half square triangles. Um, this one you're going to be pressing, it should be to the right, this seam. Okay. There we go. Like that. All right. So step eight, we're almost done with section 5a. I think we're all in order. All right, so what you're going to do is we're going to take step five and sew it to the top of step six. Seams are nested. I also upgraded my internet over the holiday because I was having way too many problems getting videos uploaded to YouTube. I was trying to upload all of the, like, clue one through four. I was able to get one through three done, no problem. Those videos uploaded like that. It was super quick. It was super awesome. And then clue four just sat there for an entire day and didn't upload. I was so irritated. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're pressing, we'll press this up now. We'll press the block. We're pressing up on these seams. Um, yeah, I was super bummed. Like, that clue for just wasn't uploading. I tried to restart my computer and whatever that restart did helped. All right, so this is what your first set should look like. And then we're going to sew the last set onto the bottom of this. Okay, again, our seams are nested. If I talk too fast, I'd love that to know that in the feedback, um, in the comments section, since this is completely different from fortune teller. Like we're not stopping. None of that. All right, so again, we're pressing our seam up. I'm gonna take this, hopefully. It's so pretty. I really do love these blocks. These are so pretty. Make sure that they're good. Just make sure that one. And it's totally okay to iron your blocks from the back. Okay, so this is uh, step eight. So we're going to take the unit we made, I think it was in step four. Yeah, so step four, we're going to take this other unit. We're going to place that to the left. And you're going to know that that's the right orientation because your F squares should be in a diagonal going down um, from top left to bottom right. This is actually really cool looking. I love this. And you're going to make two.
I'm trying to make sure that this video isn't super long, but you know, I make no guarantees since we're doing it together. Feel like I just messed that up in the below. Yeah, I did. This seam got a little too wide. So I'm gonna just pop that apart real quick. We're gonna start this. Back here in the back stitch. Okay. That makes me feel a little bit better. I let that one go a little wide. All right. So we're pressing towards the right. So the block we made, or the unit we made in step eight is what we're pressing. So pretty. All right. Pick these out just a little bit. There. All right, so you have, you should have two of these. I'm going to go ahead and set that out of the way. This is a great opportunity to pause the video um, and take a stretch break, get a coffee break, water break, whatever. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get set up for uh, Section 5B. Okay, so I hope you had a good break. I um, hope you stretched a little bit. So uh, section 5B, we're only making one block. So we're going to make all of it together. Um, what you're going to need is um, one fabric B and one fabric E triangle for step 1.1 and one fabric B and your one fabric C triangle for step 1.2.
there anything you like to watch or listen to while you're sewing? I like to either watch or like listen to a movie that I've seen before. Like when I'm recording fa um, the fortune teller block or puzzle mystery quilt, because there's so much that I cut out of that video, um, I usually have a movie playing um, or a Twitch stream. And today I was watching The Matrix because I've seen it a handful of times, probably more than a handful. And I like it. All right. So 1.1, one one, we're pressing towards fabric B. Actually, for all of step one, we're pressing towards fabric B. Grab this one. I was watching The Matrix. I haven't seen the new one. Um, and so I kind of want to rewatch. My boyfriend doesn't, isn't really like a Matrix. I think he said he saw like the first two and then he didn't watch any of the other ones. So I'm going to watch it. All right. So fabric B is oriented to the bottom. All right. So what we're going to do now for 1.3, you're going to grab the two fabric B rectangles that you have. And we're going to place one on either side. So we're going to, what I, how I'm going to sew it is I'm going to sew a rectangle to a half square triangle, a rectangle to a half square triangle, and then I'm going to sew my half square triangles together. So I'm going to take the C and B, and B should always be oriented down and away um, on your half square triangles for this one. Which is funny because this exact block is in the large. And if you've done, if you've never done a puzzle mystery quilt before, um, the small version is almost the same as the large, except the large usually has like an extra, like an extra set of blocks surrounding what would be the small. So it makes sense that some of them will end up being the same. All right, I'm going to go ahead. Um, both of these we're pressing out towards the small rectangle. Seriously love this iron. Iron's amazing. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna sew down this center seam right here, or the center set of, uh, for the half square triangles. I like to put this bulky part down at the bottom because I find when I start this at the top, this can shift, but if I've already started up here, there's less chance that this bottom part is gonna shift because of the bulk. All right, this one's gonna get pressed towards fabric C. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. You should have one of those. All right, so step two, we're going to need two fabric E triangles and two fabric A triangles, and we're going to make half square triangles. Sometimes I feel like a broken record, but for the sake of the video, it's fine.
All right, and for both of these, we are pressing our seam towards fabric E. Should probably make sure that that cord is not rubbing up against my um, camera arm. I don't want you guys to have to hear that. Okay, so now you're going to grab one fabric A square. I think it's the only one we have. And we are going to put it in between these two half square triangles. So your A fabrics should be touching. It, um, I believe this is a drop point, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I say that I'm going to brush up on my geometry every single time I record a video, and I don't. Um, so we want to make sure that our fabric E triangles are pointed um, down and out. So point the point should be down into the left and down into the right. And we're going to sew these onto the square. Math was never my strong suit, and my grandmother taught math. She didn't teach me math, but she she taught math, so, you know, it's fine. I got really good at math when I was in pharmacy, so I don't know. If I don't practice it, it gets real difficult. And now that I don't work in pharmacy anymore, it's not as easy. All right, so then we're gonna make sure that we orient this one the correct way. And I'm gonna go ahead and We had our unit Christmas party on Sunday and it was pretty fun. There was lots of food. Someone brought vegan samosas and I didn't get to try any. Um, again, for this seam, we're pressing in towards the square. So we're pressing in towards fabric A. I was really bummed. But hopefully the guy who made them will make them again. Or at least give me the recipe and I can try them. Okay, so that's step two. We're going to set that aside. All right, so step three. You're going to need to grab two fabric F and two fabric E triangles. So on the long side and then we're going to press towards F. It was very sad, but I did bring, I bought some stuff from Whole Foods because I didn't have time to make anything before drill this weekend. Nothing that would last anyways. We're pressing towards F on both of these. I so I learned from my last set of videos that I should never record 
like three in one day or four. I think I might have recorded four in one day and that was a bad, that was a bad idea. All right. So we're going to take one square fabric D and we're going to place it in the middle of our two half square triangles. So our fabric E triangles should have their point, one of their, not their full point, but like the half, well, and their full point should be oriented in towards the uh, square. Words are hard sometimes. Um, in towards the square, our fabric F triangle should be pointed away, away and to the top. Hopefully that makes at least some sense. This triangle turned out a little wonky. This is what happens sometimes when you're on, when you work on the bio. Sometimes they get a little weird. We always hope that they don't, but sometimes they do. All right, and this one we're pressing towards the half square triangles. Okay, and I'm gonna take our next one, place that to the left, make sure that I am aware of what side it should be on. Listen, if you screw up, it's okay. It's absolutely okay. No block is ever perfect. No quilt is ever perfect. So, you know, if you're, if it's a little weird, a little wonky, or you have to seam rip, that's okay. I seam ripped plenty in Fortune Teller. Okay, again, we're pressing out. These ones got a little weird. That's okay. It's probably the angle that I'm I'm at. I like this because I don't have to move. All right, so we're gonna set that one aside. Last little bit before we get to join it all together. All right, so you're gonna take one fabric E and two fabric D. These should be the last of your your blocks, and you're going to. Listen, when I get to put it in the right direction, I'm going to. So your D square should be on opposite sides of your E square. And we're just going to sew one to each side. I think I was talking at one point about my uh my control foot or my control pedal i have the ability to use that to cut my fabric and i don't anymore because i used to when i would quilt quilts at some point i would rock my heel back and cut the cool things so i put the little or the little rubber block underneath it. All right, so we are pressing these things out. Um, so away from center, um, we're pressing towards the D, um, the D blocks, the D fabrics on either side. All right. So there we go. Now we're gonna put it all together. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to orient this. I actually in, um, Carno or in fortune teller, I sewed this one. I sewed it upside down, right? I sewed it like that. So make sure that you are orienting these in the correct direction. And this helps because I have like a directional print. So my hedgehogs should all be, when I'm done, should all be facing the same way. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to sew this together first. Um, and this bottom set, the seams do not nest. Just your, it's okay. 
just be aware that they don't nest. And I assume there's a really good reason for that. Okay, and then we're going to take our top two blocks. The uh, fabric B with the rectangles on either side should be your top block. And then we're going to take the one that has your fabric A. It should be pointed down. What would look like kind of an arrow should be kind of pointed down, but it's got that little flat piece at the bottom. So there wasn't any seams to nest on the top block, but what we're going to do is we're going to iron these now. So I'm going to iron this one and we're ironing down towards the fabric A unit, the one that has the fabric A in it. So that looks pretty good. That's the way it will be oriented. All right, and then this block, the aim is going to be oriented up in the block. So we're just gonna take this guy. Give it nice, a nice long press. Maybe use some steam if you like, or just kind of hold your iron there. Okay, so this is the bottom of the block. And this is the top. All right, so then we're going to sew these two together. These seams will nest. I don't use pins, but you could. It's entirely up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. Again, the only hard and fast rule that I like to stick to is your seam allowance. Whatever it says um, in the instructions, just follow that. And be consistent. So if you're going to do a scant quarter of an inch, just every seam for whatever you're doing is going to be a scant quarter of an inch. Okay, so this one also is going to be oriented um, down. So let's see if I can make this happen and pull this down towards me. If I can get these apart. Oh, come on. Just like, just giving it a little bit of steam. These fabrics are gorgeous. Y'all, I'm so happy about this. Okay. All right, so there is fabric, or not fabric, this is uh, block 5B. It's actually really pretty. So you should have 
three different, uh, three blocks, two of 5A and one of 5B. This is really cool. I'm really excited about this. Um, and don't forget to take a picture of this with your flat Nancy and post it to the Cotton Cuts website. Um, I think they're doing giveaways every month. Um, the one person who puts their blocks, who submits their blocks, their picture. Um, and yeah, so let me know um, how you like this video. Please like and subscribe. Like and subscribes are free. Um, and uh, I hope to see you uh, for the next clue for clue six. We are halfway through. I did forget to mention at the beginning that they always, that Cotton Cuts always includes a little gift in clue five. And this one is a little iron on patch. It looks like it could also be an ornament, um, but it's a little iron on patch. It's really cute. Um, let me know what you're going to do with yours. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with mine. I have two since I uh, have two colorways I'm doing. Um, and I am doing two colorways for Tree of Life. Um, I am doing a small and a large block um, again because I liked doing it. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day. I hope you're having a great holiday season. Um, I hope it's not too cold where you're at. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>